Now that you've been exposed to all the most important visual clues to look out for, you're ready to dive right into the core detective work of being a Java developer, reading and interpreting methods. You now know that a method stores and expresses specific functionality, so let's look at how it does that. We have to start with the method signature. The method signature is the collection of code and instructions that define what goes into and what comes out of the method what gets run when the method gets called or triggered by the application, as well as who can access the method. Every method has a unique signature, and every method signature contains several clues about how that particular method is supposed to work and what functionality it provides your application. Thankfully, all method signatures follow the same basic format. Notice that there are five components to a Java method signature. The first component is the accessibility keyword. There are several different kinds, which we will cover later, but this basically defines what has access to this method. The second component is the return type. This defines what type of data the method must return. In this example, void means it doesn't have to return anything. Third, and most important, is the method name. If you want to reference this method anywhere else in your code, the method name defined here in the signature is what you have to call it. Now comes a parenthesis. This is one of four symbols to look out for in a method signature. Every method signature requires them to be ordered properly in order to be properly defined. You can see it's an open and close parentheses after the method name and an opening brace and a closing brace. The braces are the most important thing to scan for visually when you're reading code. They will tell you where the method starts and ends, and where to look for the code it contains. As you can see, I've said code goes here after two s forward slashes. That actually is meant to be a comment, uh, and we'll get into more of that later. But that's not actual code, I'm just suggesting to you where in the method the code should go. The parentheses house a special part of the method signature, called the parameters. These are basically the inputs for the method. In other words, they are what the method requires you to give it in order to run properly. In a method signature, each parameter definition requires two things, a data type, in this case, string, and a generic name, in this case, a sortable string. The name of the parameter is just a reference. Once it's been written here in the method signature, that reference can be used anywhere within the block of code between the braces. In this case, a sortable string will refer to whatever string object you offered up when you called this method sort string. Don't worry if you only partially understand what I've described here. Your understanding will start to crystallize over the next couple chapters. But for now, it's important to be able to identify each of the parts of a method signature in actual code. So, let's see what you got. Here's an example of an actual method. If you want to test yourself, pause the video and identify the five components of the method signature, starting with the syntax symbols. Okay, now let's go over this together. The braces represent the beginning and end of the code, as you can see them here and here. So this entire block of code is the method signature. The parentheses are most helpful in telling us the parentheses here and here are most helpful in telling us where to look for the method name. And as we can see, the method name comes before, and is in this case, round corner image. So when you refer to this method elsewhere in the code, you should expect to see round corner image as the name used. Notice also the camel case used to define the method name with the lowercase r, capital C, capital I. Next up, let's look left of the method name, and we find bitmap. Again, this is going to be the return type. You may not know what a bitmap is, but you can safely say now that this method better return one, or it won't be adhering to its method signature. You also see the bitmap data type used again in the parentheses here. So the method takes a bitmap and returns a bitmap. It turns out a bitmap refers to a type of image data, we are going to refer to whatever image data we passed into this method as SRC, as you can see here, an abbreviation for source. 
So you can see SRC popping up throughout the code within the method. Here, here, uh, there's another one down here. Every time we use SRC, we are referring to the image data we passed in as a parameter of the method here. Now, if you're a good detective, you should have noticed that there's something else in the parentheses that we haven't talked about yet. It's this comma. There's a comma, and then there are two more words there, float and round. Well, can you guess what the comma means? It indicates that there is more than one parameter for this method. In other words, to use this method, you have to input not just a bitmap, but also a second parameter. In this case, a float. Now a float is a specific type of number data. It actually gives you the ability to use decimals when defining a value. And here, we're going to refer to it as round. Now see if you can find the uses of the word round in between the braces. Okay, the only other thing we haven't talked about is the accessibility keyword. In this case, public. That just means you can access this method from anywhere else in the code without restrictions. For now, that's fine, but we'll talk later about the other types and why accessibility is so important. So let's see if you can put all these clues together and deduce what this method does without having to read through all this code. Ready? Well, you have a method called round corner image. It takes a bitmap and it returns a bitmap. It also takes a number. Can you guess what it does? Pause now if you need some time. Okay, if you think that this method takes a picture and rounds the corners and then returns the round cornered picture, you're right. This method is for rounding the corners of an image. The amount to round is actually given by the number you pass in as a float and the image, is, and the image to be rounded is the SRC or source bitmap. In fact, round corner image is the very same method that allows my Facebook likes to have these nice round corners on the images on the side of each row. So there you have it. That's your first example of using the clues in the code to read and interpret a Java method. Now let's dive into data, or what I like to think of as the real currency of an application. And let's see if your detective work so far can lead you to a big payoff.